Uh, good morning. Today we're going to talk about section 5.6 in our text entitled Factoring Trinomials. All right, in section 5.5, which we covered last time, we talked about GCF factoring. Now, GCF factoring is one of several types of factoring we're going to cover as we move on in chapter 5, and building up in our level of complexity, of course, as we march through the chapter. All right, so let's jump right in and I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about when I say factoring trinomials. So if I ask you to factor, uh, let me give you a simple trinomial, x squared plus 11x plus 24. All right, I claim I can break this down, factor it as a product of two binomials. Often, but not always, a trinomial can be broken down into a product of two binomials. All right, and basically we discover this breakdown through a trial and error process. For example, well, if I pick my first terms as x's, x times x is x squared, when I multiply these binomials. Uh, let's see, this sign is positive. That means these signs in between have to be the same, either plus plus or minus minus, to get a plus 24. This sign is also positive, so that means these signs in between both have to be positive. And I think we can see if I use 8 and 3, I'll get the correct layout. You can always check your answer in any factoring problem by multiplying your answer and see if you get what you started with. I could do that here easily. x times x, of course, is x squared. My outer product is 3x. My inner product is 8x, and those do add up to 11x, the inner and outer sum. And of course, the last product, 8 times 3, is 24. So indeed, it does check. So if I ask you to factor this expression, my final answer should be x plus 8 times x plus 3. OK. Yeah. Hang on. x plus 3. Now, of course, multiplication is commutative, so I can rearrange the order of these factors and still get a, an acceptable answer. x plus 3 times x plus 8 is similarly acceptable, OK? All right, since, of course, multiplication is commutative. All right, we've all done this before. Let's go up the ladder, try a couple more. Uh, if we ask you to factor, a squared plus 13a plus 40. All right, often but not always, trinomials do break down as products of binomials, and the only way to find the correct layout is through a trial and error process, like we did in the last one. So if I choose a's in the first slots, of course, the first product is going to be a squared. Again, if this sign is positive, these signs in between have to be the same. If this sign is also positive, that means they both have to be the same positive, right? And factors of 40 here, I think 8 and 5 will work, right? 8 plus 8 times 8 plus 5. The first product is a squared. The outer product is 5a. The inner product is 8a, and those do add up to a 13a. And the last product is, of course, 40. I think you'll find the real battle is to get the inner and outer product to add up to this middle term uh, when the uh, original problem is stated in standard form. In other words, terms are arranged in decreasing degree. Let's go to another one. All right, we won't always be so fortunate as to have the lead coefficient being a 1, and that does complicate things a little bit. Let's try this one. Factor 5x squared plus 7x plus 2. Well, 5 is certainly not a 1, so my first term is going to be different here. I'm going to have a 5x and an x in my first slots. And now, let's see, again, if this sign is positive, these signs both have to be the same. If this sign is also positive, both these signs must be positive. And let's see, I need factors of 2 in the last slots. Well, I'll need either a 1 or a 2 or a 2 or a 1. Uh, and only one layout's going to work here. I think this second one is going to work. 
If my outer product is 5x, my inner product will be 2x, and that does add up to a 7x. So remember, it's a trial and error process. So I'll put a 2 here and a 1 here, and we can check this. 5x squared plus 5x plus 2x is indeed 7x plus 2 for the last product. So my final answer here, 5x plus 1 times, I'm sorry, 5x plus 2 times x plus 1. Okay? All right. Let's try another one. We won't always be so fortunate to have all these signs positive, and that does complicate things a little bit. So let's say factor x squared minus 16x plus 55. All right. Yeah, let's see. How can I break this down? Well, the lead coefficient is 1, so that makes my choice of first products a little simpler. Now I need factors of 55 in my last uh, slots. And notice the inner, outer, inner and outer product have to add up to a negative 16. Again, if this sign is positive, these signs in between the binomials have to be the same. If this sign is negative, that means they both have to be negative. The negative sign has to come from somewhere. All right, I think we can see it if I use 5 times 11. All right. My last product will be positive 55, and I think that layout works just fine. Again, we can check it, at least in our heads. x squared is the first product. Minus 11x is my outer product minus 5x is my inner product, and those do add up to a negative 16x. And of course, the last product is positive 55. Be careful of the signs here. Things get a little complicated when these negative signs creep in. So x minus 5 times x minus 11 is your final answer for that one. OK? Let's try another one. Factor. t squared minus 11t plus 28. Well, again, the lead coefficient here is 1. That makes my choice of first terms easy. t times t. Again, if this sign is positive and this sign is negative, the signs both have to be negative here and factors of 28 in the last slots. Well, what do you think? I think 7 and 4 will work nicely because then the outer product would be minus 7t, the inner product would be minus 4t, and indeed the inner and outer product does add up to this middle term. Okay? So this would be my final answer here. t minus 4 times t minus 7. Let's try another one. Factor 3r squared plus 13r minus 10. All right, we've got a jumble of positive and negative signs involved in this trinomial. I believe this is one of your homework problems. Let's see. 3 is prime, so there's only one way to break down that first product. I'll have it 3 t 3r times r. This sign is negative here. Now, that means these signs in between, well, you're either going to have negative positive or positive negative, one or the other. And basically, it's a trial and error process. Now, I think I see something happening here. If I pick a 5 and 2 in that order, notice my first product will be OK. 3r times r is 3r squared. My last product will be 10, and I can adjust the sign in a moment. I need an inner and outer product to add up to a 13R. So let me see if I can work on the signs here. I think if I pick a plus 5 in that second binomial, my outer product will be 15R. And then a minus 2 in that first binomial will give me a minus 2R for my inner product. So 15R minus 2R is indeed 13R, 
and the last product will have the correct sign minus 2 times 5 is minus 10. So again on some of these harder ones you're going to have to sweat a little bit. I suppose the more you practice these uh, the better you'll get at it in seeing things come down the road ahead of time. So your final answer here 3R minus 2 times R plus 5. Try another one. Factor 2y squared minus 9y minus 18. Alright, here both of my signs, uh, well, let's see, there's two, uh, two of the signs in that trinomial are negative. Well, that may complicate things, but 2 is a prime number, so what and that helps here. The only way you can break down that first product is 2y times y. Alright, I need factors of negative 18 in my last slots and the inner and outer product has to add up to a minus 9y. Now I'm thinking here 3 and 6. 3 times 6 is 18 and I'll worry about the sign in a minute and I think I can play with the signs to get 12y and 3y to add up to a negative 9y. If I put a negative sign on that 6 and a positive sign on that 3 I think it works out. I get a negative 12y for my outer product and a positive 3y for my inner product and indeed the inner and outer product do add up to a negative 9y. I suppose I should check the first product of course is 2y squared so that checks and of course the last product is negative 18 so that checks. So my final answer 2y plus 3 times y minus 6. And again, it's a trial and error process. Basically, you just have to try some things, try juggling some things around until you find a layout that works. All right. Let me get a fresh screen. All right. Let's go up the ladder here. I'm going to factor 8a squared minus 18a plus 7. All right, now things are a little harder here because not only is my lead coefficient not 1, my lead coefficient is not prime. Right? So I'm going to have really two different possibilities for my first slots either 8a and 1a or 4a and 2a and I think I see something here. I'm going to try 4a and 2a in the first slots. Alright. Well, I need positive 7. My last product has to be a positive 7. So if this sign is positive, again these signs in between must be the same. And if this sign is negative, they both must be the same negative. So we can use that idea to uh, narrow down some possibilities. Now factors of 7. Well 7 is prime so I'm, really gonna, I'm either going to need a 7 and a 1 or a 1 and a 7 and only one of those is going to work. If I use 1 and 7 here, well I don't think that's going to work. The outer product here would be too big. Minus 28 uh, minus 28 minus 14. Now that's not going to work. Alright, so if I try this layout here, let's see, my outer product would be negative 4a and my inner product would be negative 14a and those do indeed add up to a minus 18a. Let me rewrite that. So I'm going to pick 4a and 2a in the first slots. Both these signs have to be negative and 7 and 1 respectively in those last slots will work. Let me check it again. The first product is 8a squared. The outer product is minus 4a. The inner product is minus 14a and those two indeed add up to a negative 18a and the last product is plus 7. So it does indeed check. 
and this is my final answer, 4a minus 7 times 2a minus 1. Hmm? Let's try another one where the lead coefficient is not prime. Well, in other words, you're going to have more than one possibility for your first terms. 6x squared plus 11x minus 2. All right, I'm looking at this for a moment. I'm going to try 6x and 1x, or just x in the first slots, because I think I see something happening here. If this sign is negative, these signs have to be different, either plus, minus, or minus, plus. All right, let me pay attention to this inner and outer sum here. I have to add up to plus 11x, and I think I see it here. If I pick a 2, in this last slot and a 1 in this last slot, slot. I'll worry about the sign in a minute. Well, if the outer product is 12x and the inner product is 1x, I think I can play with the signs to get 12x and 1x to add up to an 11x. Okay, The 12x is going to have to be positive, so that I'll put a positive sign on that 2. And the 1x has to be negative, so I'll put a negative sign on that 1. And I think that indeed does check. So I'll rewrite this 6x minus 1 times x plus 2. Again, check it. 6x squared plus 12x minus 1x minus 2. So my final answer is 6x minus 1 times x plus 2. All right. And again, just to refresh our memories, you could rearrange the order of that multiplication get a wonderfully acceptable answer because multiplication is commutative. Either one is fine, okay? All right. I want to talk for a moment about perfect square trinomials. Now, don't panic. What does that mean? Well, a perfect square number is a square of an integer. For example, we call 2, I'm sorry, 4 is a perfect square because 4 is the square of 2. 9 is a perfect square because 9 is the square of 3. We also have something that's called a perfect square trinomial. It's a square of a binomial. Let me show you what I mean here. If I ask you to factor n squared plus 20n plus 100. All right. So then that is hard as some that we've seen. Right, the lead coefficient is 1, so I've only got one option for the first slots. Both these signs are positive in the trinomial in standard form, so that means both these signs have to be positive. And I think if I pick 10 and 10 in the last slots, I get the correct inner and outer sum. Check it. n squared plus 10n plus 10n plus 100. Works just fine. All right. n plus 10 times n plus 10 is the square of n plus 10. That's why we call this a perfect square trinomial, because if I break it down, we find it is the square of a binomial. Yeah. So sometimes these are easy to spot. Sometimes they're, it's a little more complicated. Let me give you an example of a harder one. If I ask us to factor 9a to the 4th minus 30a squared b squared plus 25b to the 4th. Well, here we've got more than one variable, and that last term isn't a number. It's a multiple of a, another variable expression show you what I'm getting at here. If this factors, and I think it does, uh, I can break up the 9a to the fourth as 3a squared times 3a squared. Similarly, 25b to the fourth, I can break up as 5b squared times 5b squared. And notice then my inner and outer product will be multiples of a squared times b squared. 
Okay. Uh, in fact, well, let's see. If this sign is positive, these signs in between have to be the same. If this sign is negative, these signs both have to be negative. And I think this does work out. I get 9a to the fourth for my first product. The outer product is negative 15a squared b squared. Let me write that down. The first product is 9a to the fourth. I'm checking this answer. And the first product is 9a to the fourth. The outer product is negative 15a squared b squared. The inner product, well, is also negative 15a squared b squared. And the last product is plus positive 25 b to the fourth power. Okay? So we can see that those inner and outer terms do add up to the negative 30 a squared b squared that we need. So I claim this is my final answer. Well, let me read it, reread it because I think we'll see something. 3a squared minus 5b squared times 3a squared minus 5b squared. Aren't those identical binomials being multiplied? So I can rewrite this as a perfect square trinomial. 3a squared minus 5b squared squared. So this should be your final answer for this one. Again, a perfect square trinomial was stated in the original problem. Let's try another one. I might as well get a fresh screen. How about this? Factor 6n squared minus 17ny minus 5y squared. Again, your last product is a product of uh, a multiple of y squared. Your inner, your first product it should be a multiple of n squared, so your inner and outer product will be a multiple of both n and y. I think this is doable. Alright, 6n squared. I'm going to try 3n and 2n as a possibility. Now luckily 5 is prime, so I'm either going to have y and 5y or 5y and y in what order we'll determine. Uh, this sign is negative, which means these signs have to be different. All right, hang, hang on, there was a copy error. Let me correct that. This should be a plus 5y squared. Okay. Alright, so please make that correction. Let's try it. I'm going to have a 3n and a 2n in the first slots. And let's see, 5y, I think I can do this. If I put, let me try a y and a 5y in the last slots. Uh, this sign is positive which means these signs both must be the same. This sign is negative, which means they both must be the same negative. I think this will work out. Let's try it. Check it. I'm going to... Alright, so 3n times 2n is going to be 6n squared. Again, I'm checking this. 6n squared. Outer product is going to be minus 15ny. The inner product is going to be minus y times 2n. Well, I'll call that minus 2ny. And indeed, we see the inner and outer product does add up to this middle term. And the last product is plus 5y squared. So this indeed does check. So my final answer here, and this is a little bit of a harder one, 3n minus y times 2n minus 5y. Okay. All right, one item we haven't talked about yet is you know, factoring problems that are built into other factoring type problems. When I'm talking, let me give you an example. 3x squared plus 12x 
minus 63. All right, if I try to f dive right in and factor this in the trial and error method, uh, I may get a little overwhelmed because 63 is relatively large and has a lot of possibilities that you might have to check. I can make my life quite a bit easier here if I look for a GCF first. So, and that holds for any factoring problem. Uh, now, I suppose we can always have a GCF of 1. We can always have a GCF of negative 1, but I'm looking for GCFs perhaps more significant than those. What I'm getting at here is all these coefficients are divisible by 3, are they not? So I can factor out a 3 from that trinomial expression and make things quite a little easier to manage. Well, notice this trinomial, once I factor out a 3, I see this trinomial also breaks down. I'll put x's in the first slots. Uh, I think a 7 and 3 will work if I have a plus 7 and a minus 3. You check it. x squared plus 7x minus 3x minus 21. Yeah, so my inner and outer sum works out just fine. So there is my completely factored answer. Now often students forget to carry the GCF down to their final answer. So be sure to include that factor of 3 in that product chain. So 3 times x minus 3 times x plus 7. Okay, so moral of the story, look for a GCF first. If there is a 1, if there is a GCF available, it will almost certainly make your life quite a bit easier. I'll give you another example of that factor. 5a squared b plus 20ab squared minus 25b cubed. Well, we can see our level of complexity has risen from the ones we started with in this online lecture. Again, look for GCF first. Always factor out a GCF first and then factor any remaining expression. All right, I think I can see a GCF of 5B. I can pull out a 5B from all three of these trinomial terms, right? All right, if I factor out a 5B, I'm left with A squared in the first slot. I'm left with a 4AB in the second slot and a minus 5B squared in the third slot. Right? That's right. And, well, I see here with a first term, a multiple of a squared, the last term here being a multiple of b squared, and my middle term being a multiple of ab. I think I can break this down even further. Now, remember, factor means factor completely. Factor until you can't factor anything else out of the expression. Well, let's see, I'm going to need a 5B. Both these signs have to be different, either a, because this sign is negative, these signs have to be different. I'll write a, a minus here and a plus here. And let me think for a minute. I think I see it if I put a plus 5B and a minus B. I think I'll get the correct inner and outer product. Let me check it. First product is A squared. That's fine. The outer product is plus 5AB. The inner product is minus BA, which I will call minus AB. So the inner and outer product add up to 4 plus 4AB. Four that looks good. And of course, the last product is negative 5B squared. All right, so my final answer, my completely factored final answer is 5B times A minus B times A plus 5B. Please remember, to carry your GCF into your final answer. Some students or students often uh, forget to list that GCF in their final answer. All right, a few more I want to talk about. Again, factoring trinomials, that's what this section is all about. 
5x squared plus 4x plus 1. All right, now let's think for a minute. If these signs are both positive, the signs in between both these binomials have to be positive. We've talked about that several times. 5 is prime, so there's only one possibility for that first slots, for those first slots. 1, well, there's only one way to break down a 1. That's 1 times 1. And if I look at this, so here's my only possible answer, but it doesn't work. The first product is fine. The last product is fine, but the inner and outer product add up to a 6x, not a 4x. So this is my only option here, and it just doesn't work. And when that happens, we call it a prime polynomial. Prime polynomials, just like prime numbers, can't be broken down. So our book would say this is a prime polynomial or just the, the word prime as a response. Okay? Try another one. Well, sometimes prime polynomials are easy to spot. Sometimes they're not. All right, 2t squared plus 9t minus 6. Uh, always look for a GCF. Uh, there is no meaningful GCF here. Uh, let's see. If this works, I'm going to have 2t and t in the first slots. Uh, this sign is negative. This last term here is negative, which means the signs in between are going to be opposite. And I've got, well, let's see, I can have a 3 or a 2. Let's see, I can have a minus 3 or plus 2 in the last slots. Or I could have a 3 and a minus 2 in the last slots. Or I could have a 6 and a minus 1 in the last slots. Or a minus 6 and a plus 1 in the last slots. So I've got four possibilities for my last terms here. And it turns out none of them work. I'll leave that for you to check. And if none of my options work, well, this thing just doesn't break down. And I call this a prime polynomial. So sometimes prime... Uh, uh, when I ask you to factor prime polynomials, those are often the hardest ones to determine, especially when you've got a lot of possibilities to check. All right, so be aware of that. Let me do one more for today, then we'll call it a day. This is one of the, of the very last reaches of your homework assignment. Factor... 64h to the 6th, I don't panic, plus 24h to the 5th, minus 4h to the 4th. All right. Well, we haven't factored any degree 6 polynomials yet today, but I think you'll find this not too terribly difficult if we look for a GCF first. Right, what's the GCF here? Well, I think all these values and the coefficients are divisible by 4, so I can factor out a 4. And if I look at the powers of h, I can factor out 4 factors of h from each term in this trinomial. And I'll be left with 16h squared plus 6h minus 1. Right, in this last slot, if I'm going to factor everything out from that last slot, remember I've got to leave the invisible 1 as in section 5.5. All right, so I take out my GCF, and this does look indeed a lot more manageable. Let's see if we can break down this remaining trinomial inside the parentheses. I think I see it if I pick an 8H and a 2H in the first slots. Now, again, it's a trial and error process. 16's got several possibilities, but I think 8H and 2H will work if I pick a... Well, let's see, negative 1, my last product has to be a negative 1, so I'm going to put 1s in the last slots and adjust the signs in a minute. My outer product will be 8h, my inner product will be 2h, so if I put a plus 1, I'll get a plus 8h for my outer product, and a minus 1 here will be a negative 2h for my inner product, and indeed that does add up to a positive 6h. So let me rewrite this carrying my GCF into my final answer, 4h to the 4th times 8h minus 1 times 2h plus 1. 
that is my final completely factored answer for that original degree six polynomial, degree six trinomial that I was given. All right, we're reaching the 35 minute point, so I'll call it a day. This concludes section 5.6, factoring trinomials.